Hey guys, welcome to another video on IGCSE Biology Revision. Today we're covering the topic of organisms and their environment, so I want you to have a quick read. We're going to split this into two videos. Today we're going to be covering everything except for the nutrient cycles, and in the next video we'll be covering just that, uh, in terms of carbon, water, nitrogen, all that sort of stuff. So without further ado, please have a quick read and we'll begin the video. So let's go through a couple of definitions, right? We've got the ecosystem, which is a community of interdependent organisms and their environments. A food chain is a representation of feeding relationships and energy flow amongst several organisms. A food web is basically a network of several food chains. A trophic level defines an organism's position in a food chain, food web, or a food pyramid, and a consumer is simply an organism that obtains its food by feeding on other organisms. A producer, on the other hand, is an organism that makes its own food through the energy through sunlight, and we call that photosynthesis. A carnivore is an animal that eats other animals, and a herbivore is an animal that eats other plants. A decomposer is an organism that obtains food by breaking down dead organisms. So let's take a quick look at the energy flow inside an ecosystem. So a, the, the principal source of energy uh, input into a biolog biological system is through sunlight. So the sun gives off light and that light energy is captured by plants and transformed into chemical energy that is present, uh, sorry, present in things like protein, starch, and basically food, nutrients, right? Uh, so the chemical energy in plants are then transferred within the food chain by, uh, by other organisms feeding on the plant, and it gets transferred from one organism to the other, as you can see through this diagram here. So, in a food chain, you'll always start with a, a, a producer, right? The producer will capture the sunlight energy and transform it into chemical energy inside nutrients. And so in this particular food chain, we have the producer getting eaten by the primary consumer, uh, in which case is a grasshopper, and uh, the mouse then eats the grasshopper, the mouse is in which case a secondary consumer, and the owl which eats the mouse is a tertiary consumer. So, uh, these things up here represent trophic levels. Right, and so important things to note here is in a food chain you'll never have the sun because the sun is not an organism. Also, the arrow will always go towards uh, the direction of energy flow. So because the grasshopper in this instance is eating the grass, the arrow will go in this direction here, towards the grasshopper. So it's really important to understand that each at each trophic level, right, going from primary producers to primary consumers and all the way up to even apex predators, at each trophic level, 90% of the energy is actually lost. So if you represent the energy in the primary producers as 100%, the primary consumers that actually eat the primary producers only really get 10% of the 100% that the producers had to begin with. Why? Because most of the time energy is lost through these things here, that's respiration, movement, you know, homeostasis as in maintaining body temperature, uh, and the energy is mainly lost as heat in these uh, processes. Some material also uh, of an organism cannot be eaten, so for example, you know, if, if primary consumer here is eating the primary producer, not everything uh, not every part of the producer can be eaten and digested, so some energy is lost there as well. Overall, the really important thing you have to understand is that at, at really high trophic levels, there's you know lower amounts of energy, uh, so therefore you can really not, most of the time, you don't get any, uh, you don't get trophic levels that go beyond 5, so this is 5 here, simply because as you can see, as you go up, you just lack energy, so you know, those really high trophic level uh, organisms will, will not have uh, enough energy to sustain themselves for survival. Um, so in fact if you take a look here, it's actually more efficient for us as humans to eat you know, producers like plants instead of eating animals that eat plants, right? So if we eat a lot of beef and things like that, that's simply cows uh, acting as primary consumers because cows graze, right? They eat, uh, eat plants. So if we eat cows, we're really only getting 10% of the energy. If we ate plants directly, if we ate the grass directly, technically, theoretically, we'd be getting a lot more energy out of that. So to keep that in mind. 
So this is just an example of a food web, so that's just several food chains interconnected with each other. I want you to take a look at this monkey. And this food chain here, it's acting as a secondary consumer, because the grasshopper acts as the primary consumer, and the monkey eats the grasshopper, and therefore it's a secondary consumer in this particular food chain. However, if you look into the right here, you have this same organism that's acting as a an apex uh, predator. So certain organisms can have varying trophic levels depending on which food chain they're in. So a food pyramid basically sort of represents the same thing uh, as sort of like a food chain. Uh, and there's two main pyramids that you have to understand. The pyramid of numbers is, as the name would suggest, is a representation of the numbers of organisms in each trophic level. So you've got the lettuce plants, and you've got the snails eating the lettuce plants, and you've got the thrushes eating the snails, and you've got the sparrow hawk eating the thrushes. So you get, you get a nice pyramid like this. In most cases, you have a lot more plants than animals, so you do get a pyramid shape, but not always. For example, in this food chain here, you have one elder tree that is feeding the aphids and the lace wings will then eat the aphids and the starling will then eat the lace wings but as you can see this is fairly odd um, and if you want to correct the, this sort of representation uh, it might actually be better to use the pyramid of biomass which in which biomass is basically the measurement of the amount of living material rather than numbers in order to achieve a bit more of a reliable pyramid and a bit more of an accurate re representation of what's really going on in the food chain. So let's take a look at population size, right? Um, you know, populations have to grow from somewhere and it's got various stages, but let's take a look at some definitions first of all. So a population is a group of organisms of one species living in the same area. A community is all populations of different species in an ecosystem, and an ecosystem in turn is a unit containing the community of organisms and their environment in which they interact together. Factors that affect population growth would be things like food supply, predation, diseases, because obviously if you have a disease the population size will decrease, if you've got heaps of predation, you know, then again the population size will decrease and food supply if you have higher food supply then perhaps the population can grow but if you know the population is starving from low food supply then it'll obviously drop so starting from scratch you have various uh, stages of population growth you've got the lag phase which is in the very very beginning when the population size is low uh, it uh, the population growth begins slowly from a couple of individuals the log phase uh, is when there's an exponential growth and the conditions are ideal, and the maximum growth rate is growth rate. Sorry, is is, is reached. Um, there's an S phase, but it's not labeled in this diagram here. I'm not sure if you need to know, but it's basically when the growth rate starts to slow down a little bit, and that's because things like food, water, space, they all become a bit limiting as the population size becomes larger. So you get a bit more competition amongst the individuals in the population. You eventually reach, uh, reach something called a stationary phase or a stable phase. Uh, so the carrying capacity for the population is reached in this stage and the population number becomes stable. It doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. The carrying capacity is basically the population size that can be supported by that particular environment. Now if something were to happen from this stage, like there's a huge environmental change, you know, a drought, flooding, or you know, sh severe shortage of food, then the population size can crash and you get a significant uh, decline in the population. And uh, you know, this, this phase is called the decline phase. So you know, these points you have to understand, you need to know what's going on in each stage of the population growth uh, graph here. So just pay attention to that. Okay, so that's all for today guys. Thank you really uh, very much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And uh, in the next video, we'll be covering nutrient cycles, so keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.